next speaker is Will Bradley. Um, he's going to be as uh, he is the artistic director of Oslo Kunstart. Uh, and hmm? I'm so sorry. Um, and he will give a talk about the exhibition that has been there. It's there are dealing planning out the castle. And that's called the Full Steinart Fast for Greeley. I don't know how to translate that to English to English, but it's only wants to try. So, oh, oh please don't. But it's about feminist arts in at the Norwegian art feminism from 1968 to 1989. So Will? going to see like a thing. Norwegian to you uh, for the the translation of, of that title. It may take some time. It may cause some giggling. Um, so uh, this was a project. It began like uh, when two also based artists, uh, Elin Mugos and Elisa Sturzwein, came to us in January last year with a proposal to make an exhibition of International Women's Day posters, March the 8th posters. Uh, they brought with them, this is why you all have this, they brought with them uh, a proposal which was full of fantastic pictures like these, which you see on the second page of this newspaper. It's not a catalogue from the exhibition, but it's a collection of things related to the exhibition. I'm going to use it as a visual aid, so don't look up whatever you do. Uh, yeah, so we looked at this beautiful, very inspiring collection of imagery. We saw among it some particularly Norwegian images, uh, and we saw a very interesting possibility, uh, not of making an exhibition of Mark VIII 
hostess, uh, but of addressing what seems to be a gap in the formal Norwegian canon, which is the, the production of uh, consciously feminist, uh, feminist inspired or connected <coughs> artwork uh, during the generation of second wave feminism as it was experienced in Norway. So uh, we put this suggestion to Alina and Lisa. They were extremely enthusiastic and continued to be so throughout the, the year that followed. So we set this as our uh, project to look at the, the relationship between feminism uh, and visual art in the years 1968 to 89. Uh, Alina and Lisa had something of a head start being the, the children of that generation. They grew up in it and grew up into it. Uh, but we soon realized that a lot of the work that we were looking for, we didn't know about. We ended up not looking in formal collections or official histories, but very often in artists' own archives and following connections and friends and friends and friends. Uh, and then we were helped out immeasurably by a woman called Jürgen Weitberg, uh, who is currently a professor in Bergen. But she, in 1982, wrote a fantastic master's thesis uh, on three key <coughs> exhibitions. Really, there were just three uh, during the 1970s. Uh, shows in Norway that explicitly uh, connected with feminist ideas. Uh, one of them was called Finna Kunstkamp. Uh, one of them was called Hull Party, uh, and then there was a big project called Sun. Uh, Some here we are. This is the poster for Finnegan's Camp, uh, and it's a fantastic poster. It's a classic piece of analysis. It's showing the the two roles of uh, women uh, in the art museum. One naked in the uh, painting, uh, and one. Um, fully clothed, cleaning the floor. And so this goes to show that second wave feminism in the Norwegian art world shared an analysis internationally. Uh, and, and this images of this kind were common in the US and the UK and in France and Germany. Uh, so the, it's clear that there was an international dimension to the way that Norwegian artists were approaching it. Uh, feminist ideas, but what we discovered was that this project took place largely outside the formal institutions. Uh, if you look at the exhibitions that did take place, uh, Kvinnekun's camp and Hallparten both originated uh, in Bergen uh, and both involved a similar group of people as did the exhibition Samu that came uh, one or two years later. So uh, a very little of this work ended up in the formal museum or institutional collections in Norway. We ended up, we could have made a, a huge selection, we ended up working uh, with just 14 or 15 artists uh, of those three or four uh, in more depth. We, uh, we found that we didn't need to, uh, to borrow any work at all from the National Museum collection in order to make what we uh, <laughs> thought was a strong representation of the, the relationship between Norwegian and art and feminism. Uh, so we realised part of our project would be and would have to be the, the, uh, the central idea of radical art history, which is that of adjusting the canon and making sure that the next generation's basis uh, is not as lacking uh, as, as this generations. Um, so I'm just going to talk through, I think, some of the, the uh, images that are in this newspaper. So take a look, page four. <laughs> the top half of page four, you see, um, first of all, a uh, poster for the exhibition summary that I'll come back to. Then you see uh, photographs from performances by uh, an artist called Venka Mulas. Uh, Venka is atypical from the group of artists that we work with because the large part of her career took place outside Norway. She worked as a performance artist from the mid 70s till the end of the uh, 1980s uh, and she, she performed regularly on the performance art circuit. Uh, in Norway, it seems, if I can exaggerate slightly, 
she was treated as a, as a sort of punk rock spectacle rather than a formal artist. Uh, and she performed at, at places in Oslo, including uh, Club 7, for example, where she was uh, seen as a kind of hardcore punk gig. Whereas in, in Germany, for example, she was uh, also uh, invited to perform at a thing called Documenta. So she was seen quite differently uh, in, in different scenes. But then for me, so, again, something not at all typical of the mainstream of uh, Norwegian feminist uh, associated work or of Norwegian performance. Very confrontational. Uh, she, her project was to act as though um, capitalism and patriarchy uh, did not exist. I'm not going to say much more about Enka because with any luck, if the technology backs me, I'll be able to show uh, 10 minutes of a video of Venka performing uh, during your copy break, just to uh, add to your enjoyment. Um, <laughs> on, the next, uh, on the next page, uh, work by Berit Sutkler. Uh, Berit actually uh, does have one or two pieces in the National Museum collection, but she... Um, not the work that connected in any way with feminist questions. Uh, they particularly, uh, it seems, passed over a fantastic work you see at the bottom of this page, which is more good, uh, or Mother God. Uh, we did have some difficulty in hanging that piece uh, at the Kunsthalle, not because it isn't fantastic, but if you put it high up on a wall in a large room, it instantly converted that room into some kind of chapel. So we had to avoid it. Uh, page six. You see uh, page six and seven. Don't miss page seven. Siri uh, Anka Oda. Now this is something uh, the show, it wasn't just a sort of um, sieving through of work from the 70s and picking out anything that we thought we could attach the word feminism to. We tried to make, uh, after one round of, uh, of taking an overview of the field as it were, uh, we made a thesis that uh, there were two kinds of interaction between feminist ideas and art in law. The first kind of interaction being that Norwegian modernist Norwegian artists, studio artists, also uh, became connected to feminist ideas, to the cause of feminism. So the cause of feminism in its formal manifestations in Norway, including organizations like, for example, Kvinnefronten, uh, or including places like Kvinnehus. Um, so formal political organizations with demonstrations, with conferences, with seminars, with talks, uh, with the uh, dissemination and development of political ideas. Uh, and artists generally contributed to those movements as graphic artists. You have people like Cardin Rolfson uh, illustrating Kvenna Frunton's magazine. You have artists like the painter Sonia Kroon uh, making screen printed posters, uh, again for Kvenna Frunton. Uh, you, you see artists sort of putting their talents, as it were, at the service of the feminist revolution. Uh, but something else happened, which was that the <coughs> democratic revolution which feminism was part of, which was a revolution in representation, uh, affected avant-garde art in Norway very strongly. So this was an argument that we wanted to make, which was about how, how feminist ideas not only sort of created what you might think is sort of iconic or stereotypical works of feminist art, but how the demands of feminism changed the way in which representation was approached. Uh, what do I mean by that? Some examples. How much are we... Am I in my last minute yet? You have three more minutes. I have three more minutes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Then, very quick. Uh, one idea is that if... The idea of women demanding the vote, uh, in particular in the first half of the 20th century, although it was slower than that even in some places, um, it, this is about representation, it's about how women can be seen politically in society. So in some sense it's an aesthetic question. Uh, you can see 
uh, post-68 uh, is a demand for even vastly increased representation, democratization of all areas of life. So